How's it going? So we're going to be talking about a BVM. The first question is, how do we know it's working properly? So there's a bunch of very intricate valves and systems and circuits in this bag, which I'll show you that you can actually take it apart and put it back together, which is good so you can actually understand where the air flows. There's a little quick three second test, all right? I'll show you quickly. This, in this valve in the front, you see how that valve opens there? That is called the duck valve or the, 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 um, the beak, is it like duck beak valve? Does it open when you squeeze the bag? Question number one. Question number two is if I squeeze the bag at the bottom and I put my hand on the bottom, or if I squeeze the bag and I empty it, does it stay deflated? And as you can see, it does. If I let go, it reinflates. So that is a sign that the valves are working correctly. The other thing is to then close the popple valve. So if it's open and I hold, here air comes out. If I squeeze and I close the valve and I then press, no air comes out the bag. And that is a quick three second check to see if the bag is actually functioning properly. It's really important to know. The next thing to talk about is how does the air flow and where does it go? So when I squeeze the bag, air comes out of the front. When I let go, air gets sucked in the bottom. You can put a reservoir on here and attach oxygen, which then provides 100% oxygen into the bag. Whether it actually delivers 100% oxygen is a debatable question. And then when the patient breathes out, they breathe out into the hole and then it comes out onto the sides. So there's no peep valve on this BVM. I'll show you a picture of a peep valve. These are really important to have a peep valve. So the air travels in through the back and then goes out the bottom. And then when they breathe back or the patient breathes back out, the air comes out of that way. So it's a one, there's only one way for air to travel through the whole bag. How much air or how much volume do you think fits into this bag? So different bags have different volume, but it's about a liter and a half. When you talk about how much ventilation we should be giving a patient, it's let's say plus minus 500 mils. So that's about one third of this bag. So instead of seeing this sort of thing, we really shouldn't be doing that, all right? Because you're giving too much air and you're giving it too fast. We're very quick to hyperventilate with these things. I'm sure we've all seen that, at, at least where I've seen where I've been, that's what we see. The next thing that happens is that we push too hard and we push too fast and we push too much air. So if we only want to give 500 mils, it means we need to push about one third of the bag to get sufficient chest rise. We don't need to be giving a whole ventilation because excessive ventilation causes damage, all sorts of problems with that. The other issue is that then, then we have a, a popple valve and you know BVM mask, head tilt, chin lift, all, all that sort of thing. But where does the air go when we're using this and a mask? It goes into the trachea or it goes into the stomach. So at what pressure does the popple valve pop off? In my country, I'm not sure where these all come from. It's about 60 or 40. So this one you see, it says it's actually popping off at 40 centimeters of water. So how much pressure are we wanting in a ventilation? Like in a typical ventilation, let's say you're setting up a ventilator, what's the maximum pressure you're wanting in the lungs? Like 25, 30 centimeters of water. You don't want to go higher than that. So this goes to 40. So if this is popping off, we are already giving way too much pressure. And then the second question is at what pressure do or does the esophageal uh, sphincter, so the valve that's stopping you know, air from moving into the, to the stomach. I looked at Google and Google here clearly says that it opens up at 28 centimeters of water. The exact pressure we want to ventilate lungs, really we need to be very, very careful when we're using this. There's a general rule of thumb that for every finger you're squeezing the bag, that's 10 centimeters of pressure. So obviously you can't squeeze with one finger, probably are people who can. Um, but if you squeeze with two fingers, you're giving 20 centimeters of pressure. It's obviously not an exact science, but you can imagine how many more, the more, the more fingers you're pushing, the more pressure you're having. So if you limit it to two fingers, you can only give so much pressure because your fingers are only so strong. It is quite an important point because sometimes we see everyone putting 10 fingers on the bag and that would be like a hundred millimeters of pressure, which I could imagine I could generate with this. I, I, I should do a little experiment to see how much pressure I can actually generate with this thing. It'll be quite scary, I think. We use or we recommend a two hand double CE grip or two thumbs or double phenol eminence grip to the patient's face. And then we have a second person then ventilating. Because we can hold a proper mask seal, we're a whole lot less likely to overventilate or give too much pressure or give too much volume.